What's going on guys? I got the neck off. First thing first was to take the truss rod out, which a couple guys asked why I just didn't drill it out. And I didn't know if it was cracked. I didn't know how far it went. I didn't know if the truss rod channel was flat. Didn't know what I didn't know. So I used a hot knife and I, the hot knife just broke the seam of the mahogany, dug out the truss rod. It wasn't broke, but it was rusted. So not really sure why that was. So here is the heat knife. Uh, I don't remember exactly what this is called, but a hot knife. And I tried to get a spatula clamped on to heat that up, but that wasn't working. Tried a handheld router, like a pan plane router, that wasn't working. What I finally realized is you just gotta go at it. And again, why I didn't drill this out is because I didn't know what I didn't know. And taking out that mahogany with the maple in the middle um, or with the truss rod in the middle is really not that big of a deal and this worked out really well so I probably spent uh, about 30 minutes doing this and just going back and forth and the neck is really a mess it's really bad the front chip out is terrible and so we'll pop out the truss rod here and for some reason it's all rusted or corroded I, it's not bent uh, probably could have saved it but I know I need that back bow potentially so let's do it right we're then gonna score the finish on the neck time to clean all of this up scoring it will help clean before I pop the neck off the finish then won't chip out too much this is a trick I've learned it's not exact science but I meant to respray it and sand it anyway so and then we're gonna drill eight holes eight eighth inch holes to get this neck out they use that PVA glue, same thing as a fretboard. So I'm going with a couple more holes than what is needed. So we drill some pilot holes first and then this is the eighth inch bit where we actually widen it out. I've done this in the past and sometimes these necks come out easily, sometimes they don't. Here now we're going to tape it so we keep some of that steam and humidity away from the body. This didn't work out as well as I wanted. Probably should have just taped more and more or done something. You know, I wrapped this in a blanket, but it wasn't as safe as I wanted it to be. Here I wrap it in the blanket. Probably should have then wrapped it with uh, some impervial thing, like a bag or something, but it's all right finish dried out wasn't as cloudy plus I've got to sand some of the finish off anyway so I've got a Wagner steam generator drop a towel over it and we let this sit for about 30 minutes here's the steam generator on the floor be safe guys and you can start seeing how much steam is coming out I'm trying to reuse some Instagram videos for my YouTube videos. So then here's a half hour later and I probably could have pulled this maybe at 20 minutes. And it really just comes out nicely. The steam worked great. Really drilling those holes just slides out. Not as easy as the hide glue with the 54 that I did. Uh, but probably caught it right at the perfect time. You can see the finish is all hazy. That's from all the moisture getting kicked around. All that dries out at the end anyway. So then here we're going to clean off the fretboard with a couple of scrapers. I love the Stumac thick scraper. Those work really, really well. And we'll just clean this up. Pull off all that glue. When I let this glue dry hard, it really was a pain to get off. 
So then that is a straight edge. And what I want to do is just make sure I've got a couple safe spots that are straight. And the upper piece by the nut is safe. And then the back heel of the neck where the tenon is is safe. And I, I need to know what I've got to work with before we start doing the patch. So then I'll go live in video here. The trickiest part now is going to be replace Replacing the wood on the front. So there was some hot glue that was used for some reason to fix this. What I did is I cut a eighth inch strip of alder and you can see how much is missing off that front. What I'm gonna do is double stick tape this here and a little strip here and then all we're gonna do is just push this over a router, take this piece out and then we're gonna glue in a new eighth inch front plate that is going to give us some strength back and I'm going to use flame maple because I've got a couple good pieces laying around and then from there we're going to put an actual two-way truss rod in in this the neck may have some issues going back on and I need that flexibility as this neck evens out over the years so I think in the beginning I'll probably have to just tilt it forward just a tad and then as this guitar ages up You'll probably need to put a full neck on uh, a full back bow on it as the guitar adjusts to tension over time that was the lesson learned from the 53 les paul so what we're going to do so i've got a strip for the nut we'll install that here with some double stick tape and then i got this larger piece to go here we're going to actually route out a decent amount because I've got a chunk missing here and this huge chunk here so we'll get this all set up and we'll go all right so we're gonna clean out the truss rod top just a little bit want to make sure I've got it all somewhat put together in terms of my head make sure that works we're gonna add some double stick tape to the top of the neck there and then we're also going to add some double stick tape to the back side and then we're going to take this over to the router and route and at this point I realize that this neck has a bow in it pretty decent bow and I take this first pass off it's about an eighth of an inch and it's really not good cleaning off some of that uh, hot glue and everything. So I decided to do is drop a 35 pound weight onto the neck and go with a eighth inch bit and a bearing and clean this up again a little bit more. So I end up taking a little bit more than an eighth, probably about three sixteenths. And we'll go back and do one more pass sand it flat along the edge make sure that i've got enough uh, room so when i push the glue down it sits that corner is always a little pesty and that's where glue sort of builds up when you're gluing stuff so i want to make sure i've got just enough room so then i pre-cut some maple wedges after getting them to the right depth and i'm gluing them in and this is where really want to make sure that the neck is stable in all of this work you can see that significant bow in the neck and as I push this down trying to get it out and that didn't do it but what I gotta do now is clean out where I glued up those two pieces of maple so got some chisels and just cleaning out that area and then I built a custom jig to reroute the truss rod cavity and put a piece of wood in so that way I can get a nice solid channel uh, and restabilize the neck. And so what I want to do here is restabilize the neck before I have to put the wings on in the back to sort of cut out where all the garbage is, all the cracking. So this jig I set up with my pin router upstairs and it's going to do a flat channel. I've got a, I think a nine millimeter bit here that I used on something else. And what I'm going to do is drop a piece of ebony in here just to help strengthen the neck a little bit and keep everything solid. 
So we'll do a bunch of small passes here and just reroute a new truss rod cavity. Back and forth, go slow, make sure you've got it in a safe manner and that pointer finger of mine is doing all the work. You can see how bad the crackage is there. It's really terrible. So we're gonna put glue in, spread it around, and then I've got that piece of ebony that is going to add some strength. And here's the big reveal. As I'm gluing this up, you can see how far up to that clamp in the middle the crack goes, which is a really big issue. This neck has a big crack running through it that I didn't even see. So I'm glad once I put the glue on it, you can see how terrible this crack is. So I know I've got a sort of redo another channel, which is I did a little bit wider and a little bit further and a little bit deeper without busting through the back. And then what we had to do is sort of re-clean it up. This is a half inch piece of maple now. And what we're gonna do is make sure that I have re-solidified the neck. So I put a piece of ebony on the bottom as a strip to solidify it and then I put this maple strip to make sure that I've got a lot of strength and that when I go and rot out the back in the next video this thing isn't going to fly off my jig and ruin all the work I put into it. And we're going to throw some double stick tape on here. We're going to get ready for the new truss rod channel. Get this level on the bench. What we're gonna do is come through here and pre-drill the depth of the truss rod with a brad point bit. And I've got one of those mini Amana so go through. top bearing bits that's about 3 16th, a quarter inch wide. We're gonna come back and route out the new truss rod then. So I've got a mini Colt Bosch router here and what I'm gonna do is just see how much I can take out without it chipping out too much. So with this smaller bit, small radius, uh, you really gotta get the wood down and take really small passes, almost less than a 16th. And here I think I was doing about an eighth and that bit was chirping and jumping. So once I got this all set, as I lowered it slowly, I moved the clamps and just sort of went back and forth to get this perfectly done. Drilled out a little bit more to make it a less chirpy, if you know what I mean. And at least now as I'm doing this, I know I've got the decent start to a truss rod channel and I've got a strong neck that is ready for the probably most difficult thing I've done in a while, which is route out all that garbage and match up the maple ebony strips. So we're just gonna drill out the cavity and make sure that the truss rod fits perfectly. And I'm gonna have to redo this anyway once I get the new strips on in the back, but this makes sure that the neck is clean for me and strong because this next repair is gonna be a little bit tough. So thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next video.